Hey guys, this is Dardamos Domin or Dardamos with Dardamos Dominions, and we have a special guest today. Say hi, Griffa. I don't want to. Hello. And as always, we have Balin with us. I'm back for some more pain. Now, Griffa, who are you playing? I am playing the wonderful nation of Satis. And what? Why did you pick Satis? Because I have not played them before, and I know Balin loves them, so. I decided to show him how awful I can be at his own nation. Now we're going to jump into your first battle, and you, you can't see this, so you're going to have to uh, use your memory or something. And you went to your north and attacked the small small group that, that had the, uh, what was it, like heavy cavalry, heavy infantry. Something like that. How are you enjoying your start location? Uh, the mountainside sucks. Um, having the water in my cap circle sucks, but I mean, there's definitely worse spots in Pelly, like what Pelly, whatever, than oh, this one. So I'm never, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that. What are you bozos doing over here? <laughs> hey, hey, dude, uh, we're we're in a video right now. Uh, this is Dan. Oh, you're not in this game, are you? I always miss the cool games. Ah, uh, yeah. We'll, get, we'll have to get you in the other one. If you want to, I think we can sneak you into, when we keep on the video and change channels, you can actually just, you know, go along with us. I, you can I have not back. gotten my fill of being mocked by casters. Well, I mean, you might be by the end of the last episode. Most likely. <laughs> Most likely, so indeed. I, I forgot, Grandpa, that I gave you the idea for your god. At some test ex uh, examples, and all my test examples I sent you had solar weapons in them. Yeah, this asshole so, comes at me like, "Why'd you pick solar weapons, you idiot?" And I'm like, "Scroll up two messages. There's the picture of the gods you gave me with solar weapons." Yeah, so I'm going to come out and admit that that is my bad, and I am sorry about that. I shat on you for about ten minutes <laughs> talking about solar weapons. I mean, I'm fairly certain you would have figured something else to shit on me about turn two. But thank you, Balin. Apology accepted, I guess. What? What is oh, so... What's so, oh, sorry, go ahead. so you don't know your neighbors yet. And you don't know uh, the indies surrounding you, mostly. But stuck in the swamp with your candles, your income should be growing rapidly, which should be nice for you, right? Yeah, I'm actually at 433 income right now, come turn four. So, money is nice. I didn't know what this was like with Utgard. That's for certain. Well, that means you should soon start being able to pump out those good troops, those Falconeers, those elite warriors, those Sobek warriors. And that's about it, right? Oh, I've been pumping out those elite warriors like, I don't know, like a brood mother. Why? Why did you go with the uh, elite warriors? What was the? What were your other options? Well, I like the two attacks. The trident, the twenty piercing is really nice. Um, I thought about doing the falconeers, but I mean, I could. They're, they're like over twice as expensive as the elite warriors, or just about twice. And they didn't seem like they'd really survive that much more. So. I kind of decided to stick with the Elite Warriors, especially because, as I have discovered, everything around me is apparently a cataphract, so <laughs> 20 piercing damage is pretty nice. No, don't, don't spoil too much. Uh, we, we haven't made oh, it Oh, I'm just looking at literally the provinces next to my cap. Okay, yeah, I can't remember what happens in the next turn, so... There's that big uh, fuck-off cataphract province directly west of Ripa's cap, and uh, the scouting report showed that it has a lot in it. So, hence the yeah. elite warriors. So elite warriors eventually get outclassed by falconeers when you start unlocking nature buffs like uh, mass prop, which adds some protection. Oh yeah, make them be able to hit a hit harder, and they do deal with arrows better since they have hats. But other than that, massive elite warriors is a good idea. Yeah, I kind of uh, picked up on some of this from new casting with uh, Lucid talking about that statist and what to do with expansion, and then also in the latest series on uh, tearing apart someone. Oh, the uh, tournament 
And he's like, they're building the wrong units, don't build this one. And I'm like, got it, not building that one. <laughs> yeah, basically, if you build a naked lizard with a shield, don't. Like, these you guys look so... I... Sorry, these guys being the runners. Like, these little runner guys and, like, the uh, slave warriors look so amazing. They've got great attack, they got amazing damage. You can make seven bajillion of them. Oh, you have no idea how tempted I was to just spam a hundred thousand of those guys and discharge my closest neighbor. I, like, I mean, like I the running of the bulls. I did this. I did testing of these guys, and like I was just like, these guys should be amazing. I mean, it's it's everything that you want, except that they don't have survivability. And uh, turns out you need survivability. Eh, who needs it? Yeah. Who who needs gold? I mean, it just like you know, thirteen gold a pop. I mean, I'll be honest, I was extremely sad when I started this nation, because I found out that the Sobek's Sacred Guard had a combat speed of 9. So my great quickness, swiftness, swiftness build was just trash on them, because they were still slower than cavalry. And I was I was very upset about it. I, I tested you that one out. Make one of them a turn. Yep. So, they are significantly worse than white centaurs. You can make your Weather. snakes go fast. There is a... <laughs> I'm just imagining these snakes just go pew across the map. <laughs> However, there is a unique interaction that doesn't apply to this game in Disciples between Flegra and uh, Satis. When you break, when you uh, ask Diego Mantica or whatever that spell is, now I believe it's been updated that you get three Sobek, War Sobek Sacred Guard per turn now. Holy crap, that's amazing. It actually makes it... I don't know, I still don't think it's I mean, would you build three of them? <laughs> like, that's three of them that take up one square each of 30 damage and 18 damage. Like, you can get that damage by literally just having the three elite warriors in the square as compared to one sacred Sobek guard. Why does everything have such hard pronunciation? Because Bill Winter doesn't like us. I mean, you're kind of helpless with the, you know, Omni Science. Literally yeah, three seconds into the first video. Does hey, that Griffin, work? With... Yes. Hey, uh, to to kind of sneak back to the the blood, What was your what was your your justification behind this? Like, what were what was your goal behind the blood? Well, funny you should ask. So. Oh fuck. Some people know that I have bad luck in Dominions, and unfortunately, certain individuals decided to quickly pick Urmor and um, Solaria in, like, the end of the picking, whatever. So I was like, crap, guess who's going to be the poor sucker that spawns literally probably between the two of them? Like, I guarantee you, like, Urmor's to, like, my north or some shit like that, and Solaria's off to the east. Probably. Knowing my luck. Like, they're gonna sandwich me. I've had very bad experiences with both, as both playing them and fighting them in the last month. Thank you, Lucid. And I didn't want to deal with their shit, so that was why I decided to stick with that solar weapons bullshit that Balan gave me, because I was like, you know, what does Satis do? Oh, shit out lots of, like, you know, either skeletons and, like, little convenient things, or in poisoners, which are going to be useless against probably either of them. So, that was the solar weapons idea. Then I went for the standard resistances of the shock resistance, fire resistance, because, you know, I'd probably just get murdered by those. Who who are you, uh, the, with the shock and the fire, who are you aiming that towards? Who are you afraid of with shock and fire? Uh, not gonna lie, the shock one was because I was playing as Vettiheim and was getting my ass kicked by lightning strikes, and I was like, I hate electricity, and so I went with the shock resistance. <laughs> so it's um, to make Delirium up for the last game. And the fire resistance is because of the wonderful Blitz, where I had to deal with an Abyssia, and I had the fire resistance, and I was still getting my ass kicked. So I'm like, if I don't have this fire resistance, I'm going to have some asshole with like a fire two rend and be like, hello, how's your cap? It is mine now. Uh, Agrippa, so, you, know, you know that the nations change between games, right? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> it's not the same. It's not the same nations from from last game to this game. The, the nations yeah, change. I, I'm aware, but like we have like Mar- uh, Marion Young, and I think Ashdod can do a bit of fire bullshittery. Um, Ashdod's main path is fire. Yeah, I don't know Ashdod that well. I just I, for some reason I okay. Real talk. I'm fairly certain I thought fire with Ashdod because the first half of its name is Ash. It's probably why I thought it. Um. But yeah, it's like really fire, earth, astral. And then Marion Young with, again, no idea how to pronounce that name either. Um, with the fire and some air. So I saw fire and air and I'm just like, fire shock resistance, here we go. So, so you want uh, also I wanted, I wanted the path. I wanted those paths on my pretender. Um, okay, that's fair enough. I wanted death and air for Wailing Winds. And I wanted the fire for possible lanterns slash additional forging things. So I was like, what can I get with these guys? And I'm just like, here we go. So just to give you a hint with your lantern forging thing, don't forge your lanterns with your god. There's this spell that lets you summon a flame spirit, which is a fire three mage. That's fairly cheap. Use those to forge your lanterns. It takes oh, yeah. That's, that's what I was going to. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't mean for my god to be forging lanterns. That'd be really pathetic. Like I'm here to become ruler of everything. Here's a lantern. Okay. Like, who said? Who said I researched the thumb pipe? I don't want to miss. I don't want thumb pipe. Sorry. I want thumb five for soul slay. Uh, Look, okay. I, got, I got my ass kicked over in new castings because quote unquote communions exist. So now I feel pressured to use a communion <laughs> if I have even the slightest amount of astral. So. At this point, anything goes. I got these shamans. We're going to communions because, dear God, I I don't see the I don't see the flame spirit. I thought the flame spirit was conjuration. Uh, enchantment. Is it enchantment? Is it enchantment? Oh, that's weird. I can't find it. I'm probably looking right at him, and I'm just missing it or something. Watch it, like, not be a fire spell. I'm gonna laugh. Anyway, Grippa, you got any closing thoughts before we kick you out and go to the rest of the turn? Um, don't go to the rest of the turn, thanks. Or just look <laughs> at someone else. That'd be wonderful, thank you. We get to look at everybody at the same time, and we get to see everybody fail or succeed, just like you do. No one fails like I do. What? I find ways to fail that are not in the game yet. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie; it, it's been it's been entertaining to watch some of these turns. Uh, I was talking to Valen before this, and you're just sitting there going like, "Why did you do A, B, or C?" And I'm sure if you know somebody else was watching, you know me, I'd be the same way. Because when you're look when you're on the outside looking in, you just it looks like such a bad decision. That's how I live my life. <laughs> Effectively in Dominions. All I can say now is that I won a game, so at least I know I'm not the most trash person. I just know I'm trash enough that, you know, I'm like in the Museum of Modern Art. Well, you're, That's you're what doing... I'm about now. I'm still riding the high of that Vettiheim game, so at this point, whatever happens in this game, what it happens. I was going to take it as a complete joke and go for even the most meme or bless I could possibly think of. Like, I had every single weapons modifier in the bless at one point. Um, but alas, I decided to take it at least more seriously than that. I mean, it looks... You you're decided looking to good, take dude. magic free scales. Yeah, I like research. Look, do you understand how horrible it was as Ukar to sit there with, like, Mr. Zan here as Marion Young flexing on me with his level 9 access, and I'm like, I'm almost at level 7. You I'll literally you have eventually. the best. You have the best researcher in the game. Almost one of the best researchers in the game. As you start, what was your like? What was it? I didn't have land, so I couldn't oh. have income. And the Seth Kona aren't sacred, so they cost a shit ton of upkeep if you build a billion of them. That's and fair. I wasn't using them in battles, as Lucid and Sack pointed out many fucking times. So, still had like just a bankroll of them. 
Okay, dude. Well, we're gonna move to the other channel and, and, and mock you over there while while you're not there. <laughs> uh, I'm, cer- I'm certain. I'm certain. I've heard it all before. It doesn't hurt any of us. Okay, dude. Well, thank you. Thank, thanks. A, thanks a ton for joining us, dude. I really do appreciate it. No problem. Oh, okay, shit, we're I'm not mo- recruiting a man. Let me do that. We're moving to Blitz Game B. If you want to come and listen, man. Okay, hopefully Balin will be here soon. Let me get the get so that uh move channels. <laughs> hey Balin, come on over. We need to keep going through the episode. Okay, let me share my screen real quick. Sorry, it's awkward silence. I'm like, great, I'm by myself. I don't make good videos well, uh, I don't make good videos well the, uh, by, by my own. Okay, so, uh, time to talk about the turn? Yeah, well, I mean, we've already gone through Satis, and let's move into Marignan, and the nice thing is, is that with them, with them doing their, uh, their profits, we can see their blessings. So do you want, can, can you see my stream? Yeah, so okay. Marignan's got a very, very wide rainbow. So he's got poison resistance 1, cold resistance 5, defense skill plus 2, magic resistance plus 3, unaging and magic pen bonus. It looks like he's going to try and keep his cap onlys from being super old and get some soul slay nonsense in. I really, I'll be honest, I was kind of disappointed with this because the, uh, I didn't understand why exactly you wouldn't get a bless on a nation that has some of the best blessable units in the game. Uh, more comes down to the fact that you look at Marignan and you think scales, but in reality you could be like, ooh, cool bless, I can do that too. Okay, so both of them work just fine then. Yeah. Now, the... Okay, so Poison Resist 5, that is... It's not enough to stop Pile Vapors, but it kind of is, correct? It's enough to be like, you're not going to immediately die to it in the first 10 rounds, but by round 12, half your half your Sacred Core will be killed by it. Okay, so it's not enough to really have done what needed to be. Correct. And where is the other? Is is unaging is a nature bless, correct? Nature bless that requires a magic scale. Okay. And then pen is astral and magic three is astral. So he went super high astral, correct? Uh, yes, he did. But he gets two free astral points. Remember? Okay, so that's probably just astral. What five or six? Uh, no, that is. Astral seven. Is it really? That's nine plus points worth of astral. Yep, I think oh, it's five for pen. It might be astral eight, but it's either eight or nine. It's a lot. What I what I see missing is, is fire. Yeah, I'm not seeing that either, and that has me thinking. We're going to see some death explosion peltis later. Not oh, peltis, uh, flagellum. If he does that, I I will I this bless is perfect then. So uh, let's uh, show the battle result and see what uh, what occurred. Okay, so we can just see it real quick. Uh, he's got crossbows in back. Um, these guys in front, they they don't take a bless, so it's just gonna be a pretty straightforward battle. The only thing he has to worry about is his crossbows getting hit, but. Um, because these guys throw their javelins, it actually slows them up. Um, and pretty straightforward. He he does he takes a little bit of damage, but he can't really stop that. Um, okay, so we watched the Satis battle, which was pretty straightforward as well. It's not a big uh, enemy. He, he did lose a bunch of his elite warriors and light light infantry to the heavy cap, but what what can you do? That's about um, the average attrition for a Satis province. So the next one is, that we've got is Aramor. 
So, now, was it? So as Irmo, you can see, he got lucky and he got a knight spawn. Yeah, did, did he take the bless? Yeah, yeah, okay. So nothing. So that is an astral five, uh, death eight bless. So instead of taking undead regen like I thought he would, he went the other way and he took eight extra eight uh, hit points on his uh, undead sacred units. Now, which do you think is better? For your knights, undying is 100% better. For your lectors, undead regen is better. Do you think he went a full knight plus? I would not be surprised if we see some uh, impris uh, some uh, incarnate bless that is super good on knights and awful on lictors. Now, what is the advantage of going? Because there, there's two different, and we don't get to see the, the sadly the lictors are very similar to this dude, right? Yeah, just with worse stats. Okay, so it's, it's similar to this. Um, this is a lictor, which is one gigantic attack. Pretty good protection, pretty good defense, and, and just like overall a, a good sacred. These are the uh, these are your knights, which are also sacred. What is the advantage of going knights over? Uh, what's the advantage of the beaters? Well, the advantages of lictors is that they can take a hit and keep on hitting. Knights have long dead levels of HP and high-ish defense and combat speed. Uh, you get more knights from free spawn than you do lictors. And I believe you can, if you get a high enough holy level, you can spawn more knights per turn than you can spawn lictors. Now, it, yeah, you're seeing like it's it's six freaking six hit points on a, on a sacred. That would mean yeah. that when he dies, he almost gets his full hit points back. He gets more than his full hit points back. He gets eight extra hit points. Oh, wait. Is it just undying plus four? Yeah, oh, he only gets four time. extra hit points. So that means he might have undead regen too. Oh, that would be hilarious. That, or he might be getting, uh, he might get decay weapons. Really or might go, uh, full in for death weapons. What, what does death weapons do? Uh, I believe it does extra damage and has a chance to disease on hit. Okay. Yeah, either way, this is, this is definitely forming up to be a very interesting plus. I'm kind of excited. Now, who do you yeah. think is going to win this here the, between these two groups? Oh, he's going to take like five or six long dead losses, but he'll kill everything. Why is that? Because it looks like they're about the same size, and these guys have only got five hit points. But they're pierce resistance, and they all have power shields. Okay, so you think that the, the shields and the, uh, and the fact that they take half damage from piercing, and these guys have all got piercing damage except for the heavy infantry. Yeah, which, are gonna hit which will probably route when the knight gets into the commanders like it does. Yeah, look at that. I mean, these guys are on the corner, and they're still tanking like a boss. But these guys have got 16 protection. Holy crap. Undead Triari can repel. Kind of interested to see. Where's Triari? Legionary Triari. Uh, yeah, look at, I mean, look at this. Like three flipping repels. That's amazing. Wow. They have length four spears. And, and a, a sixteen attack. attacks. They've got sixteen attack, dude. That's after they've been buffed by the Armor and Scalaria unholy power spells. Oh there you go, yeah, it's the uh plus four. It's still I mean even twelve is pretty amazing. Sixteen is I mean, that's pretty solid repelling there. Yeah, so he probably lost about fifteen long dead. He lost four guys. And none Damn. of them were the Triarii who who were in the uh were in that little uh what salient. Like they, they were in the salient and they still survived. That is absolutely uh, amazing. However, unless he has uh undead regen, any damage done to these will be permanent. So even if these indies didn't kill them, they weakened all his long dead for the next battle. Okay, that is that is pretty I didn't actually know about that. Unless you have undead regen, but is that only for the is that only for the sacred or is that for everybody? It's only for the sacred. 
Okay, so these guys are permanently gone forever. Or permanently damaged forever. Yeah. Okay, so let's look into the Van Hein fight. First thing I notice, no sacreds. No sacreds, no prophets. So we don't know what his plus is yet. But we did want to see what these, uh, I wanted to see what these skin shifters do. Okay, so he already took an arrow shot, and that actually, his regen is already going in. Oh, you can see the Oh, there we go. So the wolves have, oh man, he's already diseased. Um, better protection. Um, better attacks, and he's got three attacks. So when you turn into a wolf, it's actually kind of a good thing. And you only have 20 hit points. So you're still only gaining two two hit points per round. These guys would be amazing if they actually took a bless. But they don't, because you have elves on horses. I'd rather take the, the, the wolves. <laughs> so I think he lost nothing? Yep. He he lost absolutely nothing. So that's... Uh... Okay, now Ashdod. We get to see if they went scales or... Um... Or see what they got as their first one. So let's check this out. Um, major, I mean, look at that. Poor, poor Griffa doesn't even know it. But he's, he, he might be uh, Ash God Bane already. 15 poison resist. So this looks like the st this looks like a nature. This looks like a nature three. Uh, magic. Actually, no, the nature four magic three. Magic 4, Earth 4, Air 4, and something in fire. Where where do you see the fire at? That plus 1 morale? And that's the basic. I think it's basic for all pluses. Okay, so then that looks like his entire bless. Do you think it's his entire bless? Because I was kind of curious. This doesn't look like a... I mean, unless he went with some sort of titan, which he really doesn't need. He probably went with the guy without pants. Personally, I think that this bless with a regen, like either a dormant or even an imprisoned regen, would not be terrible. Because you get 350 points, you probably get enough to pay for that regen bless. This is not a scary Ashtar bless by any means. Yeah, I agree. It's it, That's why I'm almost thinking that it needs a dormant less in addition. The other thing is is that I see is um these are not the sacreds. Is that he got he got fire or he got shock resist, but he could have gone fire shock um with his earth instead of this reinvigoration. And I'm not exactly sure why you take reinvigoration on giants. Is he he might not be making his bless around the big anakites. It might be on the Sheshite anakites, the ones that berserk. You can see them in there. Oh, is it one of these guys? No, uh, the dude with the swords. Oh, there we go, yeah, yeah. So these guys will zerk, and he just wants to make sure they continue to zerk. I think so. This, does uh, zerking make you start uh, fatiguing more, faster? Your value of berserk adds that amount of fatigue to you per round. Okay, so it adds to your encumbrance. Or does it just no. add to your fatigue? It just adds to your fatigue. Okay, that I didn't know. Okay, so at this point he's gaining five in, uh, five from his encumbrance from uh, from melee, and then he's also gaining two from going berserk. But I just I don't I still don't see it. I, I guess he's losing three per round, one naturally, and then two from revig. And then if he goes to uh, and then if he uh, if he's not actually attacking, then he's it looks like he's almost losing fatigue. He is fatigue negative when not attacking. So yeah, I don't. I'm not exactly sure that. I don't know if I'd go this route because uh, when I started, I really liked the the reinvigoration, but then I found that two reinvigoration is not really that much. On a nation that is spanning rigor mortis every single battle, and you're using living troops. I can understand picking it. Yeah. This is not the case. So I I think that I'd rather go fire shock and then turn the shock into maybe uh quickness maybe or uh or just not go air at all. 
and then try to. Yeah, I would have. I would have not gone fire resistance since you already have basic fire resistance on your sacreds oh, and gone right. all the way up to fortitude. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I agree. That fortitude is probably best. Um, so yeah, I can see why he did that. Then getting the uh, getting the shock resistance, you don't need the fire and shock resistance. But he probably expanded without loss because Ashdod has good giants. He lost oh. an Edomite to probably like a crit or something like that. It was to a heavy infantry, most likely a crit. So yeah, that's pretty standard. So that's, yeah, it's that's interesting that he attacked with the scout though. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I did, he killed a guy. <laughs> um. Okay, so now Pan's attack. And we actually saw this one, we went and saw this one beforehand, and what's interesting is this is not his starting troops. He also recruited white centaurs, and the question is, where are the white centaurs? Money is he snuck move with the white centaurs in a different army and forgot about them. Uh, I didn't even think about that. You may be right, because that would have been, because the, his H1s are, are, uh, our stealthiest. That's hilarious. That's absolutely terribly hilarious. Since you see the centaur cataphract is not stealthy. Yes, I think you're right. Um, no, oh, I'm blast. willing to bet the white centaurs are in this province, but they are hidden. <laughs> oh my. Um, and then it's we, less. Is magic weapons fire shock. That's it. So what is that? Like earth... Four, five, and... Earth, five, astral, four. And whatever else path his god has are not enough to get blast points. And he and it's an, it's an awake pretender right now, too. Yes. Why would you go this plus? Uh, honestly, white centers are pretty killy on their own. He's getting rid of the two easiest counters, which is throw air elementals or fire elementals at it. And he's got magic weapons to deal with bullshit etherealness from uh, body ethereal, but that's it. I mean, I would get strength, attack, skill, make them kill stuff when they hit, but I guess it works. Yeah, the, the magic weapons are very good against elves. Uh, isn't that correct? Yeah, because elves will mist form. Okay. So you've got magic weapons against the elves, but the thing that's funny is is that you've got enough attacks from your from your centaurs. I'm almost curious if you could try to avoid magic weapons and get yourself a better bless. I mean, the it problem would be is a when bless. you avoid magic weapons, mist form becomes a bitch to deal with. Okay, yeah, fair enough. It's it's what one damage each until you deal more than twenty. It's one damage each until you deal more than twenty five, or you get lucky, and I think there's a one percent chance per attack to just pop it. Yeah, it's, I I I kind of throw that one away because that that means you'll take ninety nine damage before you get that thing to pop. Yeah, and since you see, their only real chance to pop it is on a light lance charge that has to go through protection first. Yeah. So that's fair enough. So that it would elves would be kind of a counter um, and you'd want to avoid them. But that's only one of, you know, all the nations. I don't know. I it's really weird. I don't I don't put as much uh, as much into magic weapons as a lot of players do. And I might it might be something of a failing of me as a player because I just don't see the uh, I see the, the potential for countering, you know, MR a lot. It's just a lot more power. You get, you get MR3 compared to magic weapons. You also play a lot of nations that have native magic weapons. Yeah, uh, that's that's probably true, too. So, uh, so what do you... Uh, I'm guessing... What do you think is going to happen to this battle? Well, we have a bunch of lightly armored probably undisciplined satyrs against heavy infantry and light infantry with a lot of commanders. He can win this since he's got his prophet, which should be killing one troop every combat round. But I'm worried that his satyrs will route first. 
Yeah, I, I just, I'm kind of curious as to where the white centaurs are hiding. <laughs> it would be kind of cool if, you know, they came up from, like, the back. Oh, shit, he's on cast spells, not cast spells in advance. Oh, man, so he's not actually killing anything. He no, just he's just hemorrhaging of courage. Well, at least we know that they're not going to run. So, I mean... It, it, until they do. Yeah, until they do. They did, I mean, they didn't do terribly, even by themselves. But the thing is, these are not cheap troops. I think these are like 12 or 13 gold each. We can check after the battle, but yeah, they're not. Okay, no, I take it back. They're only 9 gold. I mean, this is a pretty good unit for 9 gold. It's lacking in protection, but, you know, a lot of hit points, a solid spear, and a javelin. That's not the worst thing in the world to spend money on. Yeah, but you see that nine, nine uh, H uh, nine morale, and I don't believe I saw the skirmisher tag. So there are eight morale in combat. Mm, yeah, you're right. Huh. So yeah, it looks like a mistake. I think you're right. I think he did stealth in here with his four pants. I would actually be interested. Maybe we could see if we could pull him in on one of the next episodes and ask him what's going on. Sure, we can look work into that. Scalaria. Yes, they run into the Barb province like they should. And oh shit, they have Shadow Vestals. Okay, this was entertaining because last time we talked about this and you said that they were not that great. Uh, we'll see what his bless is coming up. Okay, I think that was his bless. Yeah, there. Uh, Farcaster and Undead Leadership. Why do you take Farcaster? You take Farcaster for... Uh basically the death combat spells because the the ones that aren't quarter skeletons which the ai will always spam off script have really shitty range and there could be really powerful ones so you take it so that you know so your troops can your mages can actually cast those through your hordes and hordes of long dead okay. uh, you take undead leadership on scalaria as a crutch but it's a crutch that you need because without it you are spending way too many death gems summoning kings. It basically makes your cultist from 25 undead leadership to 125. Okay, so you only need 10 of those guys in comparison to like, what is it, the 15 mountain kings? Which 15 mountain kings is something like 80 a pop. 45 death gems? So you're saving yourself yeah. 45 death gems. So, oh, okay, they're 80 each, I thought they were 60. So, I mean, yeah, but it's still, like, something like 35 death gems or something around there. So you're you're saving yourself death gems by doing this. Yes, you are. Per per thousand, per thousand uh, skeletons, which is not a whole lot. Okay, so, so look at that book. What's it say? Are you still there, dude? Yeah. So you can see that last barbarian leader right about to get smurfed by the Roman infantry. Is that this dude right it's here? More so. No, that's that's just a regular barbarian. He's the dude with the great sword that <laughs> looks different. <laughs> so our, so Scalaria is about to win this with very few losses just because barbarians suck at formations. Now what's interesting is is like this guy here is surrounded by all of these. This one is surrounded by I mean, it's literally six sides. And, I mean, they're doing well. They're doing really well. I yeah, mean, but until they, they decide to... Mind. Oh. They're a... <gasps> There's only four of them. Yep, and they're ethereal with 16 defense skill. If they would have gotten... Uh, if, if he would have had five of these or put these in a formation with one of these other dudes... They would have probably stayed there the whole time and just wrecked face. They were in a formation. The problem is they're faster than everything else. No, they, they retreated on their own, so they were in their own formation, dude. So, wait, he put them in a formation of four? Yes, yep. he did. So, so uh, watch how this goes. If you see, like, none of them have died, and all of a sudden they're like, yeah, screw this, Chad. And they're running by themselves. Now, the nice thing is, I don't think they get off the map, so he still has them for the next battle. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, the very, the very last square. That was lucky. lucky bastard. I mean, in, in losing two guys, okay, technically three, because this other Retarius is gone. 30 gold for a 
38 Barbarian Province is a steal. Yeah, I, that's skill area locked out and expanded into the correct province. That was actually really... I, I'm impressed. It's looking good for, for skill area so far. Okay, so let's look at... Uh, I like steel. Um, precision. So maybe Bows of War? Nah, that's gotta be for uh, oh, yeah, Iron Lord Iron Third. I'll, I'll be honest, dude. I don't really like the... I like Iron X having that shotgun blast where it, it spreads out. Especially in bigger battles, it to me, it, it does as much damage doing that as it would be a directed blast. I don't know why it is, but it just it, it feels better during the, the bigger battles to have it have that, that wider blast. Yeah, it feels better. I don't think it is better. I think it's negligible on which it is. But I think this is more for forging and for casting uh, globals than it is for the bless. I agree. Well, that's air four. Fire. What what fire is that? That is the fire. Uh, so he's he's an air three. This fire no, two yeah. coal or, or he's, he's an air three more? fire three coal three earth three astral five. Or oh, four. oh, Mon survival earth. But that's okay. So that's three. Farcaster is is that air? Or astral? Yeah, it's air one. Precision okay. is air one. So he's high air, low fire and cold. Or no, in water. he's three air, three fire, three water, three earth. Where are you seeing the third fire? Fire resistance 10 is a three point fire bless. Oh, you're right. I forgot about that. Oh, man. I need to copy one. <laughs> okay, so, so he's got a rainbow. He's got a uh, elemental rainbow. Correct. With Astral Four. With Astral Probably Astral. an alchemist. Okay. Okay, and then we've got uh again he he picked up some are these the black plate or are these the better ones? Nineteen. Are these guys actually the, the twenty? No, they're not. Oh, they look they look uh they look like they've got better armor, don't they? Yeah. Okay, and then... Oh, he ran into line drive. He wins with no losses. Yeah, like, there's no way that they're going to take anything other than just accidental losses. Like, you're seeing, like, little pieces of, like, two damage here and two damage there, and I'm sure every single one of those two damage is a critical hit. So, absolutely nothing. Okay, um, anything of note from this other than, uh, that you saw from this turn? Nope, other than everybody but Pan expanded. So, okay, yeah, Pan... Hold on just a second. Let me let me get to my turn. Or, I, I did put comments on here. Uh, okay, so yeah, that, that's it for the turn. I'm not seeing anything that's really a huge uh, a huge change from last. I'm not seeing any bounces coming up or anything like that. Um, and we are at 43 minutes, dude, on the, on the first expansion turn, although, you know, the interview did take a whole lot of time, so... Um, any other, anything else of note? I think we can do the second, the next turn pretty quickly, since we've got everything down, we've talked about their blesses, and then I think we can call it a day. Yeah, actually, that's a good idea. Um, and I think that's the last one that we've got that's live right now. So, uh, of note on this turn, I did want to say that, uh, who did, somebody did not, Mary, Mari does not expand on this turn, interestingly enough. Yeah. So... He, he ran into an easy province last turn, and I think he's coming back to get it. Valeria runs into their other high-income province at the woods, which is against those tribes. Okay, interestingly enough, he does have, he brought in some more Vestals, so I'm guessing he's going to go more Vestals. And what's interesting is, I'm kind of curious how those Vestals would do against the elephants. Ethereal basically makes you immune to trample. So that might be his answer to the elephants, and it might not, I mean, looking like the Vestals, even though normally you don't take them, seems to be working out very well, except that he lost two of them this turn. Yeah, and they're not entirely cheap. Yeah, 45 gold each, that's a 90 gold, 
So we lost about 150 gold, but that's not too bad considering this is like a 70 some odd gold uh, province. I think. I and it's an 80, it's an 80 troop province he ran into. Yeah, so really good losses all overall. Scalaria is actually doing better than I thought. I was kind of worried about him a little bit. Yeah, I expected unbelievable levels of salt, but no, he's doing fine. All looks like he's got this in the bag. Nothing here should kill him. What's interesting about this is that we're not seeing his, I'm not seeing any knights, and normally I think you can actually get off a knight expand at this turn and do a double expand for your turn four. That's what I do with mine. Whenever I play with all my, I expand with knights until like around turn 10 and then you start getting ready for your first four. And it doesn't look like he's doing that. Now Ashton did a double expand. Ashton bought Mercs this turn. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Anakite's running over stuff. I don't see this going poorly at all. Yeah, we're just going to see that, because, yeah, he lost. Okay, uh, Aramor. Actually, let, let's look at the other uh, Ashton fight real quick. So, he bought the Maceman Mercs, and it looks like he didn't give them any additional scripting. I mean, you really don't need to. These guys are pretty flipping solid. I mean, this looks like it should win. But right you here. see how the, you see how they went to surround, and then the maceman got stuck on the heavy infantry. Yeah, and they instead of killing the heavy infantry, they killed the the, the light infantry. But if you see this, even still, he still almost won. The only reason he lost was because of the light infantry right here. Yeah, that was on guard commander. Yeah. Get get rid of these guys and uh yeah he would have won that so it was that's kind of a tragic loss because these guys are really like these basemen are actually really good troops and you normally pull two to three uh two to three provinces with them this was just bad luck uh, I, think I think he could kill this with a scout with a with a, with an Ashdod scout now oh yeah he's gonna definitely expand into here so I think I I think my guess was that he was gonna triple expand next year or next uh, turn. Because he's he's got this party still. This one he can take with like a small little force, and then he's hopefully he's got a second party up and going. It's really weird, dude, because I normally expand twice by turn four, um, with most nations. And I I mean we're only seeing a mercenary double expand by turn four. Remember everything Astrod wants to make us a hundred plus gold. Well, Astrod is doing the best of the bunch. That's what's interesting. I mean, he, so, he double expanded technically. So Novell brought whatever free spawn spawned and brought it into this army. He's now got two knights. And they run around, hit the leader, everything runs. Yeah. That's, uh... I really like these knights. I, I'm going to play a single-player version and try this out. Uh, but yeah, six so he losses. lost some... But yeah, like this is not. Wait, he summoned a censor. You can solo provinces with your, uh, if you get the right bless with these guys. Yeah, but you need something to bless them. I'm more confused why he summoned a censor of all things. You don't get these guys, is there any chance you get them randomly? No, you have to. You have to spawn them with death gems. Yeah, that's, that's rough. Because if you're getting a sensor, you're not getting lifters and you're not getting anything else. Like yeah, you're not I, getting any troop production. Yeah, I would focus on getting a couple of the shitty death uh, D1, D2 mages so that you can spawn other things instead of using your mage. Hmm. That okay. Your uh, medium level mage that Ermar gets. But that's interesting. Okay, so we did look at this, but this is actually two provinces away from Satis, and he ran into, uh, cataphracts. Twelve cataphracts. Twelve cataphracts. My guess is... And we is all know how this maybe, goes. Maybe he saw that it was only these guys, because of the, uh, because of the, the bug. But, I don't see any world where this, this turns out well. <laughs> like, it just, this is not a good thing. You know what's worse? Does he lose the profit? Oh man! Run! Run! They're gonna kill you! Oh, God. he lost everything. Poor Griff. I'm he, glad we. Yeah. I'm glad. Was it? And he killed nothing. 
I take out half of the cataphracts, so this is this will make it easier for Mari to take. Exactly. Oh man, I'm so glad that we were able to interview him first, because uh, yeah, th this was sad. Okay, and then the last one for the episode is the van attack. And this oh, looks... you missed you missed Pangea. Oh, did I? Okay, yeah, I'll, we can I'll do go that. Back. So more skin shifters and more human troops with shields. Okay, so absolutely, this is gonna be no losses if any at all. Actually, I think he lost the Huskar. Oh, and... you're right. Okay, there awesome. was. Those are 10 gold. Skin shifters are the ones that are expensive. So 35 gold for a province is not... That's, that's, that's a little bit. And then the last one is Pan. Let's see. Oh, look at that. He just... Yeah, I, I, I think... It wasn't during magic phase. Oh, yeah, but it only gets a magic phase attack if somebody magic phases in. So my guess is that you are correct. This was actually what he sent last turn. But I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe he couldn't afford that many white centaurs. But yeah, you, you can, can see afford like, six. You can afford five or six when the white centaurs with four hundred gold. Uh oh, but I don't think you can get it through his scales. His scales were not very high. He has got turmoil sloth, and until you take your first province, I don't think you either have. It's either you're low on recruitment points or you're low on on production. You start with four hundred gold and. White centaurs, if I recall correctly, only cost six, uh, twelve resources. Yeah, it was not. Uh, and I they only cost something like thirty something recruitment points. Yes, the recruitment points are the problem, and he's in sloth right now. So without oh, wow. getting a, a cat province, maybe. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have a large amount of white white centaurs, so that's all he had in, in the last... Remember, because last turn, too, he didn't... Uh, he had guys here, so... He should uh, be safe to expand towards Marignan now, with limited resistance. Do you think that... I don't... Can, can they take this? Maybe. Not with his bless. But normally, you should be able to take between whatever that w uh, wolf tribe actually is with the white centaurs. So I'm guessing it's four to get here, or no, no, it's, it's uh, six to get here, and then it's probably... Um, they all have four survival. So it's 19 to get here. Oh, okay, he should so be yeah, four survival gets the wall. So now, he should be able to hit that province with his white centaurs from his cap. Yeah, and possibly the centaur. So maybe we'll see a double, like a, a move from here to here, and then these guys coming into here, um, and to, just to get that, that forest under control and possibly try for this one, because he doesn't, I don't know if he knows that Mari's here yet. Now, he knows interest, somebody is in this area. He doesn't know who it is, though. How no, does, how he, does found, he, he found mine, yeah. He posted in general chat, He his harpy scout went over there. Oh, did it? Okay. I bet I bet the first move he did was right here. Either here yeah. or here. Okay. I missed that. Okay, dude. Well, um I think that's it for the turn. We we might be wor we might see a bump next turn here. Um Scalaria has to move all their troops back, so that's kind of sad. Um Alm, Oh no. Oh. Alm looks like it's gonna box Scalaria on that island. <laughs> I will laugh if they go from here to here and just take his cap circle. The real power move. Can well, you imagine? Death two scales in that province. I'm pretty sure there's a death site at Lizard Shaman province that he's going to want to fort. Jeez. So your gear, like I'm, I'm almost like this is this is probably ah, all might go up here, but all could easily come over and take that. Ashdod could come over and take that one easily enough, and then you have a five province Valeria. Which, oh. which, if they fort every single province and you leave them alone for fifteen to twenty turns, is still a scary Scalaria. I will, I'll, I'll give you that. That is very true. Um, but still, I think that I'd still rather have more than five provinces. <laughs> 
I, oh, elk, I would I would love to have more than five provinces. It's can he get off the island before his opponent locks him in is the real question. That's yeah. I, I do like the aggressive um, expansion by Ulm, by the way. That is pretty amazing. That is a pretty good idea, because then they can start, like, sectioning off parts of land that they can claim as their own. Also, if you look at Ashdod, one second, he bought the Shipbreakers. Hmm. I'm not... Oh, I guess he could go... Shipbreakers could go here, and then if they if he sends enough troops with them, he could take this province and then get into this lake right here, which would be a good idea. Although shipbreakers can get into that lake easily, they are six hundred gold worth of troops. They're, they're, it's an amazing group, and what's funny is is that nobody else can really contest this because you're looking at Scalaria and Airmore are really the only ones on the map that can go underwater with any amount of ease, and even Scalaria has trouble. Yeah, Scalaria needs a, a undead summons to do it. I'm curious when. These guys start getting their heroes because on certain nations, heroes change the way you play. Which nations in, in particular are you talking about? Well, if Satis gets any of its heroes, they are basically better versions of what they can get. Alm but gets the greatest hero that they could ever ask for, the Locksmith, which is a huge mage by Almish standards. I think it's a six-path mage. You know, it's funny is I usually take Lux Scales on Ulm, and I've never gotten him. And I've played hundreds of turns of, uh, or not hundreds, but at least more than 100 turns of all games and never gotten him. We won't see Itimu this game, thank God. Why Why will Itimu not be on here? Because Hero Chance is 3% per province plus Lux Scales times 1%. Okay, but and it, and it's, it's, he's got a spawn on your capital. Right. Yes. Now, one interesting thing is uh, that we might see him. We've got the Throne of Fortune. Okay, so we can technically see Timu. <laughs> there it is right there. All he's got to do is just fight. It's actually really close to him, too. So but, we might see a Timu, but I doubt it. Yeah, which is, I would argue, Ermor's strongest troop, unit, commander, whatever, is Itimu. When without him, you crippled the nation. Yeah, I don't know why you would take Misfortune Scales on Airmore because the money from Locke, and then you're already taking, uh, you're already taking turmoil already. It feels like you'd really th those money, like the, the the money events could literally give you ten to twenty turns worth of money. He also went turmoil drain Misfortune, meaning. He can and will lose magic gems to random events. Yeah, I don't know if I really... Uh, I mean, I've seen this before, and I know that like Nosy is one of the players that I talked to about Airmore, and he said, and he was fine with draining everything. So, you know, maybe there's something that I don't understand as to why you would go full, why you would tank everything. Uh, but losing out on, on a team seems, seems rough. Yeah, that that seems like might be a misplay. What also might be a misplay is he's expanding away from Alm, and Alm has great priest mages, so if Alm is given enough time to shore up the forces, he will be able to push uh, or more. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. What is uh, the Almish mages, what are their MR? Is it lower than normal? Uh, like 12 or 13. It's 14 on the Master Smiths. Uh, yeah, 14 is not bad. So, if he does go with damage reversal, I mean, you're not guaranteed to to, to avoid all the damage, but uh, it's still more than 50%. And we also have almost hit points, meaning they've got more than 10, so they probably can take a damage reversal and survive. That's true, too. This will be interesting. I think that... Uh, when I first looked at this, I thought Airmore was, was doing fairly well. I still think Ashdod's in the best position. Uh, Ashdod, to me, the world is their oyster. This is their game to win or lose. Um, they've got the territory that they need. They've got the neighbors that they need. They don't have, they, they don't have Airmore near them. Um, they've got Scalaria, but 
I, I, I feel like Scalaria, I guess they probably could deal with, with Ash Dodd well enough, but, uh, you know, they've got other neighbors that are pretty easy to. See, what I think is going to happen is Ash Dodd's going to kill two people, and then he's going to run out of steam. Even with the scales? Uh, with, yeah, because he's not Scales Ash Dodd. Scales Ash Dodd has magic, and Scales Ash Dodd has less turmoil. But he's going to kill somebody. He's probably going to kill somebody else in a long, bloody war. But with his bless, his Anakites die to water elementals. And Pan can throw water elementals at him. The Tis can throw water elementals at him. It's all, it won't be cheap. But I, I'm going to be that, cynical and say I don't think we're going to see water elementals. I really don't. Pan, Pan doesn't go up Conjuration. If I remember correctly, um, I, I don't see them, and the, their water isn't, they don't have deep water. They have, you know, water one, water two. Which um, is all you need. Satis, the water elementals would have to go through the skeleton, so I guess there is that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of curious. I'm, I'm curious as to how this, this will actually play out here. But poor Van, I don't, they do have magic ones, correct? Wait, go back to Ashdog. What, what, what about Ash Dodd? Like, the, the Anakites have made of magic weapons. Go back to his cap for a oh, second. Geez. Okay. I saw somebody's cap that you were clicking on recently have 35 PD. 35 PD? Yeah. That's just a plus 10 event, I think. Might have been Van High. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Probably just a good, or probably just a luck event. Let's hope I, it's a luck event. I hope he's not. I'm, I, I, like, this This looks like a solid, like, this looks like he practiced expansion and knows a little bit, although I guess that is just a solid formation, isn't it? I don't like doing this, and the reason why I don't like doing this, I mean, even if you split them into, like, where they're not the same groups, you put one block here, one block here, and you get surrounded less. You, you pretty much give yourself more frontal area, if that makes sense. Let's see if I can actually show. So, like, if you had, like, a block, instead of having, like, one block of troops, you put, like, one here, one here, and one here, and you have, even though you're not in line formation, it's still similar to a line formation. Yeah, and it prevents you from getting surrounded. But it does. we'll have to see if the, that formation he's using bites him in the ass or not. That'd be interesting, um, especially if he goes against these horse tribe any time in the future, it's going to make it really bad, because line formation is better against arrows than than, uh, than the block formation. Well, uh, just be I think... What's this right? Yeah, I was about to say I agree with you on that. Because it can go up, down, or it can go, it can go farther, it can go up, and it can go down and hit somebody. The only place where it doesn't hit somebody is if it falls short. Or in line formation, it can go up and down, but if it goes deeper, then it misses as well. So you, you, a, a third, a third less arrows are le are likely to hit. And the thing about arrows are, unless you're very, very close within tech ten squares, they're guaranteed to miss. Yeah. Arrows never hit unless they're within ten, with unless they're within ten squares. Or 14, I think, if your precision is 12. So it's like uh, 10 plus 2 times your, your extra precision. So. But yep, yeah, um, I guess we're over the hour mark, so uh, I think we should end the episode here. We're out of turns anyways, and uh, I guess we'll get another one in about a, a week or so. Yeah, when we'll get more turns, less rambling, and maybe even a bump. Oh, dude, there is always rambling. Just let me tell you, uh, I th this is this is normal for me. I can't be precise like like Lucid and the other guys are. So. That was wishful thinking. Yeah, that we exactly. both knew was not going to happen. Okay, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next one.